Coming up on today's Locked on Angels. All right, it's time I finally address this. We got to talk about Albert Pujols right now on Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Locked On Angels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Today here on the show, we have Lucas Smith of Locked On Cards, and we are going to dive right into this conversation about Albert Pujols. We're going to talk a little bit about David Freeze, too, reminisce a bit about uh, Dexter Fowler, and then talk about the 2021 season and where the teams are moving here this next season. That's right now. Let's go ahead and jump to that conversation with Lucas Smith of Locked On Cardinals. Lucas Smith of Locked On Cardinals here today. Steve Granato, Locked On Angels here in this crossover. Lucas, how you doing, man? How's the lockout treating you? Uh, it's treating me just about how it's treating everybody else, but it, it's it has been fun coming up with interesting topics. But I'm I'm ready to cover some actual off season baseball. How you doing, Steve? Yeah, I think I messed up. I hit all my big hitters in the early part of the off season. I did them all during the playoffs, and now here we are <laughs> going. Uh oh, didn't know yeah. about this. Well, I mean, I did know about the lockout coming, but still, I was not fully prepared. So here we are <laughs> doing a locked on crossover. So there you go. Um, the, the, the elephant in the room between us, mm-hmm. and I know this is going to garner a ton of hate in my comments, which is why I wanted to avoid this, but it's inevitable. It's very Thanos snap here, <laughs> but if we got to talk Albert Pujols, man, mm-hmm. that, so that situation shook out before I took over the show. I took over the show in September. So, uh, I, you know, I was just. I wouldn't even say I, would, I tweeted about it a couple of times when it happened. I don't remember what I said, but I remember feeling like a just like disgusting feeling in my stomach about the whole situation, mm-hmm. about how it all ended and the things that were said and just the way it seemed outside looking in how the angels treated Albert Pujols on his way out. Um, it very much felt like here are your bags get out the door. And it, it just felt it just felt very wrong. I, I don't care so much on how his production was and how what he was saying. Like it, it just felt very wrong for baseball. How did yeah. it feel as a Cardinals fan outside looking in? It was definitely an, an eyebrow raiser because immediately everybody in Cardinal Nation or Cardinal fans, everybody, is a reunion possible? Can, can this actually happen? Is this going to get done? Um, but but yeah, it definitely felt odd because Albert Pujols, I mean, if, if he would have retired the day after he, his contract was up in St. Louis, he was the first ballot Hall of Famer. You throw in 600 career home runs and what he did with the Angels, he's obviously a Hall of Famer. So for a Hall of Famer to get the kind of, at least from the outside perspective, the kind of treatment that he did from Los Angeles or Anaheim, whatever the Angels decide to call themselves, <laughs> um, it, it definitely w- w- was a shock because you didn't expect a giant like Albert Pujols to fall like that. You know, the old saying, the bigger they are, the, the harder they fall. That seems to be true, at least for Albert Pujols and the Angels' perspective. Um, but I think that the, the initial reaction for me was, what is the realisticness of a reunion with Albert Pujols? And I still think that there is a realistic opportunity if Albert wants to play one more year and take a significantly diminished playing role. Um, but the argument at the time, Steve, was that Albert Pujols was basically a better right-handed Matt Carpenter. Uh, Matt Carpenter has had an atrocious last couple of seasons after a really solid to arguably great Cardinal career. So Albert coming back to St. Louis was kind of in our pipe dreams at the time. Uh, we all know what happened as he went to the Dodger Blue. But I think that that was the first reaction was Albert going to St. Louis. And how realistic is this? You had people on both sides fighting yes and no. I was more in the no category. However, I think I was wrong looking back at it. But Albert wanted wanted to win. And at the time of, of his release, it didn't look like the Cardinals were going to do that. So I don't blame Albert for going across um, across the city to go to the, to the Dodgers. And, you know, he, he didn't win a championship there, but he had some pretty big moments in a pretty pretty deep uh, postseason run over there in L.A. Now, this is just me getting out ahead of comments. Like, I'm not going to lie. This is me getting out ahead <laughs> of comments. Because the last time I tweeted about this, I tweeted during from the Locked On account during the – I think it was the NLDS. And – the angel, the Locked On Angels timeline was just filled with hate. I mean, it it was 
Like, it was hurting me. And again, I get it. Like, I, I get that Albert Pujols wasn't great here. I, I understand mm-hmm. that. Like, I watch baseball. I, I know that. I'm not an idiot. Okay? I get that. But again, like, from my perspective, it's not like the Angels have done anything during that tenure anyway. And I know people will blame right. Pujols for that. But it's not all Pujols' fault. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. But the hate that was filled on the ti- on the Lockdown Angels timeline was just so, like, jarring and... It, it really pained me. So I tweeted out, I don't get why Angels fans are actively rooting against Albert Pujols. Mm-hmm. And for the next three days, all I saw in the mentions was just the worst of baseball fandom. So I don't know if this feels like – I know this isn't your problem, Luke. Let's, this is my problem. Uh, I want to hear it out. Let, 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 let's pass it I, I haven't talked out. about I never talked about it on the show. <laughs> well, and I here, probably should have. <laughs> yeah, that was my opportunity. It's the middle of December. So that was my opportunity. <laughs> right. Yeah. I I'm going to be honest. And I've talked about comments a little bit here on Locked on Angels because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, it's the internet. But it made me feel awful as a human being. Like, I, for days, I felt terrible. Mm-hmm. So I turned off replies on that tweet because it got, like, 400 retweets or something. And people mm-hmm. were just responding, responding, responding. I, was, I couldn't see anything else. Mm-hmm. And then I turn off replies from people who don't follow us. Then that turned into people quote tweeting it, which made it worse. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to stick by my guns because I, I'm not like, I hate Albert Pujols. Like, I, I don't care. Right. Like, I, I enjoyed him as, as a person. He did a lot for this community. He does a lot for the St. Louis community still. Absolutely. Absolutely. So he's a good dude. Um, but anyway, I, I know this is just me getting out of the comments. So, hey, remember, just because it says Locked on Angels, there's still a human being running that account. Like, it's still yes, me, man. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I don't know. Man. I, I know this is a therapy session now with, with Lucas. But uh, that's okay. that was just maybe, an awful we, situation, man. Maybe, maybe we, we need to have more of these. That, that's a future idea for, for Locked on. Locked on therapy session. For, for locked on, yeah, locked on I know that a lot crossover. of our Locked on hosts could use that. Uh, Bryce Patrick <laughs> comes to mind during the season. <laughs> locked on Rangers. Love you, Patrick. This holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. Built Bar is filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly still low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and it's high in protein. You get the best of both worlds. It's delicious and healthy. With so many flavors, you're going to have a hard time choosing raspberry, mint brownie, cherry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, or peanut butter brownie. They're all so delicious. And if you like those marshmallowy treats around the holidays, you need those Built Bar Puffs. They're light and fluffy and there's a bunch of different flavors all covered in chocolate that tastes so good you won't believe they're filled with protein. Here's a quick little tip that dip that protein bar into a hot cup of cocoa and let it melt a little to give your beverage a bit of that Built Bar flavor. I have a promo code for you. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's Built.com. Promo code LOCKED15, 15% off. Uh, but I think that Angels fans and Cardinals fans, when you when you ask them about Albert Pujols, obviously you're going to get very different responses. Albert Pujols had one of arguably one of the greatest uh, ten season run of all time with St. Louis. Goes over to to, to the Angels with this big expectation. They, they signed C.J. Wilson that same offseason. You have Mike Trout coming in the wings. You maybe you didn't know that Mike Trout was going to be Mike Trout, but you still hindsight says you had Mike Trout coming. You you think playoff team. You think World Series championships, and they made one postseason. R- birth in 10 years in 2014 I think I want to say and they got swept by the eventual world series champion or American League champion um Kansas City Royals so the, the perspective is wildly different right these these Cardinal fans that have been deprived of Albert Pujols for close to 10 years outside of his reunion in 2019 with with when the Angels came to St. Louis they they, they still think that Albert can, can do at least a little bit of what he did because they saw him day in and day out amaze us for 10 years do the unthinkable, do, do the improbable, win MVPs, win World Series championships. It was incredible to watch. I remember Dan McLaughlin, the play-by-play announcer for the St. Louis Cardinals, his home, his call of Albert Pujols' home run in June of 2019 when Albert made his first return. Uh, I, I believe it was something to the, to the tune of Albert gave us 11 great seasons of, of memories, and here's one more. He said that as the ball left under the left field bullpen in that, uh, in that series. And that, that, that call was spot on. Because it was nostalgia. It's always nostalgia. Baseball is such a history, nostalgia-like sport that 
And I, I'll be honest. There's a part of me that wants to see Albert don the birds in the bat again. There's there's no question. You know, I grew up with this guy. I, I was 11 years old when he left for St. Louis. I remember one day, and this is, might be a little reverse therapy session. It was the off season in 2011. Albert had like just recently signed with the Angels, and I was again 11 years old, and I was just sitting on the top bunk of my bed just crying. And my dad comes in and says, "What are you crying about? What's going on? Are you okay?" And I said, "Yeah, I'm just sad Albert left." Like he meant something, you know? So 10 years later, when you look back and say, ooh, is it a reunion possible? You really want to say yes because you really want Albert to come back and be a Cardinal and, and relive the glory days, if you will, of him donning the birds in the bat because there are some great memories there. And it, it's unfortunate that he, he didn't live up to really, in my opinion, any of the hype with the Angels. He had some nice seasons. The first one wasn't terrible to, to start 2012, but overall it wasn't even close. I think that what Angels fans, and you can might have a little bit more insight on this, is what they can reminisce in is that he hit most of his big milestones there. 3,000 hits, 500 and 600 home runs. Um, he's, yeah, it, it, most of his milestones came in an Angel uniform, which, and, you know, from my perspective, is a nice memory for, for Angels people to look back on. I think the Angels fans also missed a lot of those. A lot of those happened on the road. <laughs> and I think also one of them, I can't, I, th- I don't remember which one. Uh, I think it was the – he passed somebody. Gosh, I, it's all a blur. But it was during the pandemic season, so mm-hmm. no one was there. So yeah. we missed a lot of those milestones. I know that sure. either five or 600 happened in D.C. I so. think five because he also – I think five because he also hit four with the Cardinals in D.C. That was his 400th home run. So four and yeah. five I think came in D.C. So Angels fans missed a lot of it, um, which, is a, which is a big bummer. I, th- I think Rod Carew's 3,000th came on the road too. I, I wasn't alive, so nope. <laughs> don't blame me. I think it's on the road. Um, yeah. so I know we, Albert came in Seattle, didn't it? His 3,000th? I, th- I think it was an opposite. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds yeah. right. And the Trouty's, Trouty's 300th came during the pandemic season. So we've missed out on a lot of uh, a lot of things, which is a bummer. I think, too, one of Nolan Ryan's no-nos came on the road. <laughs> so <laughs> we're doing great now. A lot, lot of pain in yeah. the Angels. But you know what? We won the World Series. On home turf. This is so, true. This is that true. Helps. Against, That's yeah. not a lot of people can say that. Um, nope. Let's move on from pull hole stock. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to. Again, the comments are going to be awful, man. I, I'm probably just not even going to look. Um, but so l- let's move on. So I, I want to talk about another Cardinals legend that mm-hmm. we also got a little bit taste of. This is super timely. Let's talk about David Freeze. Absolutely. I think David Freeze had a pretty darn good career here in Anaheim. <laughs> like, I, he, like the last time prior to Rendon, and obviously that hasn't shaken out the way that everyone has hoped for, mostly because mm-hmm. of injuries. But um, you know, that was like that felt like the last solid third baseman the Angels really had. I don't know, I'm probably missing somebody in there, but you know, I know mm-hmm. that Cardinals fans very clearly have a great memory of David Freeze. Yeah, and that was ten years ago this season. Uh, he was able to to come back and celebrate. There was a book That's written right. about it that was really awesome to, to read by Benjamin Hockman. A uh, little soft block. He was on my show, so I feel like and it was, he's a great dude. And it was a great book. So if, you, if eleven and eleven is the book, if you want to read it. Uh, but yeah, David Freeze, obviously. I mean, hometown kid, NLCS MVP, World Series MVP, the heroics in Game Six and really Game Seven, uh, the RBI double in the first inning, just unbelievable. And uh, and even after that, in 2012, he had a really solid season. In 13, he got off to a slow start, which is, in my opinion, what led to his trade. But he was somebody that was really soft-spoken, really quiet, and just went out there and tried to do his job and do his job to the best of his ability. And that, and he is going to be remembered in St. Louis forever. Like there, There's no question about it. He, he's, he's, in my opinion, one day going to be in the Cardinal Hall of Fame. Not the Cooperstown Hall of Fame, mind you, the Cardinal Hall of Fame, the, the team Hall of Fame. And when he got traded, I think that that was the, the first real moment of, oh, it, the, the, 2011 was three years ago. You know, at the time, I think he got traded in uh, the offseason of 13 going into 14, if memory serves me correct. But it was like, oh, that's like really the path. It's time to move on now. And at that point, Matt Carpenter then shipped over to becoming the third baseman. But when that trade happened, that trade shocked me more than the Alan Craig trade shocked me that year uh, because I – you know, again, I was 13, 14 at the time. I really wanted David Freeze to stay. David Freeze was one of my idols, one of my heroes. So that that trade hurt. You know, not not as much as Albert leaving, mind you, three years prior to that. But that trade really did hurt. But but similar to Albert, David Freeze is just such an awesome guy. Um, and similar to Albert as well, he had a very nice reunion at one point uh, whenever he came back as the Dodgers um, in his last at bat at Bush against Michael Waka who, ironically enough, Michael Walker was the compensation pick the Cardinals got when Albert Pujols left. 
It's all connected. Uh, he had a home run off of Michael Waka. I believe it was 2019, if, I, if memory serves correctly. But yeah, Freeze will, will, is somebody that will forever live in, in Cardinal lore. I've actually not planned. I have the World Series DVD right on my desk <laughs> right here. So it's something Amazing. that it's, it's an incredible memory. And yeah, I think that there's an argument to say that David Freeze's tenure in, in, in Los Angeles turned out better than Albert Pujols. Would you agree with that? Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, sure. It, it was much shorter, much right. shorter. <laughs> it's harder. To I, I had to look up the trade. If you're watching on the YouTube site, you probably saw me googling like a madman. I completely forgot like what the trade was. This is eight years I ago. I think Salas went over there, didn't he? So yeah, that was the that was a pretty good trade for the Angels. I don't know. It, it was pretty good for both sides. Um, so it was Cardinals trade David Freeze Fernando Salas to Angels in exchange for Peter Borges and Randall Grichuk. Now, mm, Grichuk right. obviously went on longer. Peter Borges, I believe, is coaching now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Grichuk obviously ended up playing in, in Toronto um, and, and had a pretty decent career up in Toronto. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Fernando Salas was one of the better middle relievers the Angels had for a while, too. Um, and then, obviously, David Fries was, was pretty darn good. We've, we've seen some trades recently, even as far as recent as last year, uh, getting Dexter Fowler to mm-hmm. Anaheim. Obviously, he ended up getting hurt. I was real bummed out because I, I always loved watching Dexter Fowler play when he was mm-hmm. in Colorado. Um, I loved him in, in Chicago. And then when he came to Anaheim, I was like, oh, cool, dude. Like, I've always liked Dexter Fowler as a dude. Mm-hmm. I talk a lot about dudes here on this <laughs> uh, on this show and how much I like just cool like guys it. being mm-hmm. on a team. Like, yes, obviously, everyone wants to win. But if you're not going to win, at least have cool people on your team. And Dexter <laughs> Fowler is one of those guys. Like, oh, this guy's just chill. Um, yeah. So I was, I was excited and then obviously ended up getting hurt and ended up being a season-ending injury, which was such a bummer. But Yeah, Dexter you know. Fowler's... Time in St. Louis was, was an odd one, to say the least. He, he had a tumultuous year. I think he batted 182 in 2017 or 18. I forgot to look up the stats, but it was really bad. He had a couple of really bad seasons. I don't think he meshed well with, with Mike Matheny. He, he didn't live up to the hype. And granted, he signed a five-year contract when he was 32. So it's not like he ex- it was expected for him to, to light up the world. But I do think that he fell short of expectations. But also, as we saw with a couple other players, Colton Wong comes to mind. As soon as Mike Schultz took over, Fowler's numbers began to improve. And no matter what, whether he was struggling or doing well, you always saw a smile on Dexter Fowler's face. Yeah, um, I didn't like him as much when he played for Chicago, not going to lie. <laughs> but I have always liked Dexter Fowler. He, he just he seems like a guy that anybody could be a good teammate with. Um, you know, And again, another guy that I wasn't a huge fan of when he left, Dexter, uh, Jason Hayward, he and Jason Hayward seemed to have a lot of fun in Chicago and form a good friendship there before Fowler came back to St. Louis. So Dexter Fowler, yes, while the, the numbers might not have been what Cardinal fans wanted. I do think Dexter Fowler uh, is a good person and had a good time in St. Louis. Uh, you know, I don't mean to speak for him. Maybe he had an awful time. I don't know. If he did have an <laughs> awful time, he, he sure seemed to, to hide it a lot really well and, and give the fans everything he had, which in my opinion, you know, this is maybe not as pessimistic as the world really is, but if you give the, the, the fan base everything you can, you, you should be able to rest your head easy. And from the outside perspective, Dexter Fowler gave St. Louis everything he could. And I can guarantee you, if he would not have, I think it was an ACL tear, if I, or ACL or Achilles. If he wouldn't yeah, have had that season ending. Leg, yeah. Yeah. If, if he wouldn't have had that season ending injury, I think Angels fans would have seen that as well. Um, and again, not Mike Trout type numbers or anywhere close, but he, you, you, like you say, would have been a good dude and somebody that you would just want to have on the team. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues its march to the College Bowl season and the Pro Football Playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use promo code LOCKED ON to receive that bonus. Basketball, football, hockey, boxing, UFC, all the way to your Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing opportunities. Offers available for you right now. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Let's shift the conversation. Um, one last thing I wanted to talk about is is the Cardinals 2021 season, and I'm sure that you will hash that over a trillion times during the offseason, <laughs> especially in the lockout. Yeah. If it weren't for that run, man. Mm-hmm. Then, then the Cardinals likely would have been disappointing, like the Angels were. Now, I don't think that the Angels necessarily had the expectations as a organization 
like the Cardinals do, just like a perennial contender. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it weren't for that run that the Cardinals had, like there was, you were likely not going to make it like like the Angels were. So yeah. that that's where I wanted to draw some comparisons. Here is when it came to the deadline, the Yankees and the Angels were like one game apart or two games apart in the standings. Like it was ridiculously close. Mm-hmm. The numbers were almost identical, and the Yankees went for it, and the Yankees for all the problems they went through, succeeded. They went for it. They got yeah, guys. They they yeah. tried, and the Angels sat on their backs, mm-hmm. right, and just watched it play out. And I get it. The Trout injury. I know that that has a lot to play with it. Look at the Braves. So that's where I go. When it comes to deadline, I don't think it necessarily matters as much as who's contending at that moment. Would you agree or disagree? Doesn't matter. I think it, it matters to who goes for it. I mean, you look at the Braves. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it, that right. it, in that scope, right? Like it shouldn't matter who's contending because you can go for it still, unless you're like 60 games out. Right. right. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, unless you're the Pirates or the Orioles or the Rangers, right? But I yeah. think that you bring up. I think you mentioned the Braves. That's a great example. They lost Ronald Acuna Jr. That that's their Mike Trout. What did they do? They got Jock Peterson. They got Jorge Soler. They got Adam Duvall. They got Eddie Rosario. They made small moves. And in a way, went for it and won their division and won the World Series. So I think that you can bring up a great point that just because you're X amount of games out, baseball is so weird. And I know this better, probably better than anybody as a Cardinal fan and follower. 2011, 2021 even, 2020 when they made their run. Going back historically, 1964, they were at it. 1964 and 2011 are compared greatly in terms of great comebacks. Baseball is a long season. Even from July 31st to October 1st, that's a long time. A lot of things can happen. So I agree with your point. If teams really want to go for it, they can go for it. There's enough talent around Major League Baseball right now and enough smart people running organizations, especially at the team level, that if you want to go for it, you can go for it. And I did an episode the other day on what if the 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 proposed 14-team expanded playoff had happened in 2021. I think that you see the Cardinals be more aggressive because they would only be four and a half games out of a playoff spot rather than five games out of a playoff spot. But the, the, the Cardinals really got rewarded for two mediocre moves, John Lester and J.A. Happ, with an improbable run. And I think that when you're talking about expectations that you started this conversation off with, it's an interesting topic because if you look at the Cardinals' expectation on July 31st and the fact that they made the postseason, they met expectations. But if you go back further and talk about the expectations they had in in February and March, especially after the Nolan Arenado deal, they did not meet those expectations whatsoever because they didn't win the division. That was their expectation once they got Nolan Arenado was to win the division. Things didn't work out. The Brewers were better than we, than than I thought they were going to be. Um, Flaherty got hurt. The offense struggled for the first part of the season. Bader was hurt. Things happened, right? But the expectation game is interesting because it, it's all about perspective as to when those expectations start. So I'm going to ask you, when you look at 2022, both the Cardinals and the Angels have already got some starting pitching. Uh, Angels getting center guard, the Cardinals getting Steven Matz, two former Mets. Right now, as the time of this recording, December 22nd, 2021, what is the expectation for the Angels going into 2022? You can answer first as the team stands, and second, what your expectations are for after the lockout. Expectations as a team, uh, as the team, probably right now middling pack second or third Mm -hmm. Um, with Strohs and Mariners still ahead. Uh, I think they still feel like they're better than the Rangers. I still think that pitching wise um, and then still better than Oakland, who is selling the farm. Uh, Fan base will continually tell you fourth place. Um, (laughs) And as far as my personal expectations, once they get out of this lockout, I think they make a hard push. If they're legit, if they're serious and they put their money where their mouth is, they make a hard run at Carlos Rodon. I think that's a legitimate move that they're going to go for. If they don't get him, they try and sway Clayton Kershaw. If they don't get him, by Joe Adele, by Brandon Marsh. Uh, I think that's where where they're at. But um, yeah, it, it's there's so many things that have to happen still. I mm-hmm. still don't think they're a true contender. I think there are too many question marks and too many gambles on Noah Syndergaard, on Michael Lorenzen, on being legitimate and being serious contributors in the rotation, that you have to have a lot of things go right, and that's without factoring in injuries right now. So those are all things that just have to go right. But 
I, I don't know, man. I, I I feel like I've talked about this a trillion times. It's <laughs> off season stuff, man. And there's a lockdown. Yeah. You gotta fill time. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's I, I saw you did an episode with Jeff Carr about talking about Luis Castillo. Do you th- and do you think that that's more of a fallback option, or what do you think the uh, the uh, options are with the Angels and Reds getting a deal there? I still think that it's too high of an asking price. Uh, <laughs> Jeff pitched me uh, pitched me a trade that was utterly ridiculous. I'll leave a link to that in our episode uh, <laughs> description. Uh, it was like out of this world. It was like three three or four first rounders. <laughs> I, was well, like, I was like, Kai, like, I don't care what man. trade values has to say. Like there's a difference between value on paper and <laughs> value as an organization. I was Absolutely. like, that is just not happening. Yeah. Um, but this is a whole bunch of fun, man. We could, we could talk for hours and hours and hours and maybe we'll, we'll link back up once the season comes back around. Maybe once Albert Pujols does sign back with St. <laughs> Louis, we'll see if that ends up uh, turning into a thing. But Lucas Smith, thanks for uh, joining us and thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. Much appreciated. Uh, Why don't you tell my uh, listeners and followers where they can find you? Yeah, at Steve Granato and, of course, at Locked on Angels and, you know, YouTube and all that. stuff. It's everywhere. If you're listening to Locked on Cardinals, you can find Locked on Angels. (laughs) Absolutely. Yep, and I'm at LJ Fastball, as you can see on YouTube right here. I'm pointing correctly. (laughs) I'm at LJ, uh, LO underscore Cardinals on Twitter and Instagram. So uh, best of luck to the Angels, Steve, and uh, hope that the Angels are able to compete. And and I think it should be a... An interesting AL West. I think that, that 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 division intrigues me a lot, especially with the moves the Rangers made. I'm not saying it's going to be an AL East type division, but I think it, it could be a very competitive division and a fun division to watch. We'll see, man. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for us in today's episode of Locked On Angels. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q and Lee Sterling. All right, guys, thanks so much. We will talk to you in a couple of days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, here on Locked On Angels during the offseason until we get to spring training. I'm Steve Granato. Later. Later.